and I believe collectively as a group we're going to kick the competition's butt because we understand how important it is to think, execute, and dominate. Suck it up! Get tough! Suck it up! Get tough! People want to have success, people want to make a lot of money, but they want it to be easy without any challenges. Do you think it was easy for me to become one of the top 450 basketball players in the world that you never heard of? The only way I made it to the NBA is I was fundamentally sound, I was mentally tough, and I never quit. And even when I wanted to quit, I had people in my life that would make sure I didn't quit. I hired and, and set out the top 10 motivational speakers, watched all their videos, and I watched them one by one because I understand that if I pay attention to what the best are doing, I could be the best too. I watched game film on Michael Jordan. No matter how much I watched, I couldn't do what Michael Jordan could do. I would watch Magic Johnson. I couldn't do what Magic Johnson would do. But I sat there and had these videos. I watched Les Brown, Zig Ziglar, Tony Robbins. My hot wife was scared. I was scared. I called him to my office and I said what a husband say. I said, babe, we're going to be okay. Every month the checking account was drunk. I said, babe, we're going to be okay. Let's start a motivational speaking business. I go to Jerry Sloan and I say, Jerry, I'm trying to make your team, but since we don't scrimmage, I feel like I can't show you what I can do. Go to Corral, hear me clearly. Listen to his answer and it will unlock some mysteries as to how you become the best in the world and what you do over a long period of time. Jerry, I'm trying to make your team, but I feel like I can't show you what I can do. He says, Walter, I already know what you can do, but if you want to make my team, I suggest you listen, follow directions, and execute. Listen, follow directions, and execute. What I didn't realize, even though we didn't scrimmage in practice, throughout practice, we did drills, and he created what I call habits and rituals. Every single day, practice was the same. Every single day, we drilled on fundamentals. Every single day, we worked on habits and rituals. So even though my mind was floating, even though I was selfish and self-centered, he was conditioning me into the culture through practice of habits and rituals. The reason why I tripled my NBA income in three years is because of habits and rituals. Next year, if your name didn't get called to come across the stage, I'm here to tell you they will call your name next year if you go back home and execute habits and rituals. I wanted to scrimmage for me, but Jerry Sloan was getting me ready to play for the Utah Jazz. So every day, it was about habits and rituals. Having hot food is about habits and rituals. Great customer service is about habits and rituals. Being the best in the world at what you do, being a pro, is all about habits and rituals. Let me tell you something. I learned a very valuable lesson when I played for the Utah Jazz. I had a point guard on my team who's arguably the best point guard in the history of the NBA. His name is John Stockton. John Stockton would go to a chiropractor four times a day on game day. You know what I said to myself? I'm not doing that. It doesn't take all that. John Stockton played 19 years in the NBA. I played three. You would have thought I'd have been smart enough to watch a Hall of Famer and just shut my mouth, hop in the car, and go with them. No! My mind said, yeah, it doesn't take all that. And I would tease him. Man, John Stock, are you uh, OCD or something? Why are you going to a chiropractor four times a day? He swore by his chiropractor. That man played point guard in the NBA until he was 40 years old. And he didn't retire because he got slow. He retired because he refused to wear baggy shorts. He loved his Daisy Dukes. Every day on game day, that man would go to a chiropractor four times a day. And in my immature basketball mind, I would say, it didn't take all that. I don't need to do all that. I'm an award-winning motivational speaker because now I pay attention to details. Another peak performance truth, peak performance a detail-oriented.
The reality is this, there are 450 ball players in the NBA every single year. They give out 450 jerseys and there's only 10 superstars. So while the general public focuses on the superstars, professional sports is really made up of guys like me. Every single day I drilled the fundamentals. So when I left sports and got into business, I didn't focus on making money. I focused on fundamentals. Because I understood I made it to the NBA because I was fundamentally sound. So when I get into business, if I become fundamentally sound in business, and if I become the best in the world in business, I bet you I can make a whole lot of money. I got recruited coast to coast, and that's how I learned how to sell. The doorbell would ring. These coaches would come into my living room. They always traveled in a pack of three. They always wore university issued golf shirts. They always had a brochure and they put the brochure on the coffee table. They were always four students on the brochure. Two white, one Asian, and one African American every single time. And sometimes they would substitute the Asian for a Latino. And as I collected more brochures, I began to recognize some of the same kids on different schools' brochures. And then I realized, you know what? Oh my God, these aren't students, these are models, and this is big business. Your industry is big business, and whenever you have big business, it's very competitive. But in basketball, if you win by one, you still win. If you win by one, you still win. So when you want to compete at a high level in a very competitive business, you better pay attention to every little detail. Sometimes in franchise systems, when the leader talks about what we need to do, some of you sit there and say, oh, we don't need to do that. I'm not doing that. It doesn't take all that. It don't need to do that. I don't take all that. Some of you guys right now in the opening keynote had that thought going to your mind. Oh, I'm not doing that. I don't need new plates. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. You already made up your mind not to do it. Great people, pay attention to detail. So at this conference, don't you dare let your mind say, oh, I'm not doing that, it doesn't take all that, I'm not doing that, it doesn't take all that, it doesn't, you'll be average the rest of your life. Great people pay attention to every single little detail. I used to think that way, it doesn't take all that, but you know what, in my basketball career, I played three years and I should have had a longer career because I did not pay attention to detail. I'm kicking my competitions, but mainly because I cut off the news and I understand my success is based on my daily habits. The first day of high school, I walked in full of confidence. I believe confidence is arrogance under control. I walked in my first day of high school full of confidence until I passed the principal's office. And he was 6'6", 240 pounds. Everybody else called him Mr. Bond, but I called him Dad. That first day of school was the longest day of my life. I attended high school in Chicago's inner city where my father was a principal of my high school. I got to the lunchroom and I ate lunch all by myself. I could hear my classmates whisper, that's the principal's son, that's the principal's son, where, well, right there. I couldn't wait to get home. I made up my mind, when I get home, I'm gonna throw a pity party. Go ahead and cry, feel sorry for yourself. Be angry, be frustrated, but I only give you three days. I went home that first day of school and I threw me a three-day pity party. You guys don't know me, but I know how to party. Peak performers always think positively. So go ahead and throw your pity party for three days and that's it. Every ever thought after that third day, make sure it's positive. If you see you or feel yourself thinking negatively, stop it right then. And reprogram your mind to think positive. I'll give you three days. Go ahead and do it. I do it myself all the time. But I threw that three-day pity party that came up with a plan. I'm going back to high school. I'll be starting a baseball team, basketball team, football team, president of my journalism club. My classmates are going to vote me most likely to succeed. Four years later, after my pity party, I got focused. When I was an immature basketball player, I didn't get that concept. I had another teammate named Carl Malone, who arguably had the best body in the history of the NBA. I would go to restaurants with him, and he annoyed me. I couldn't even imagine what the waitress felt like. He annoyed me. Now, he had the best body of all time in the NBA, but he annoyed me at restaurants. He would order grilled chicken Caesar salads, and he would ask the waitress, when you grill my chicken Caesar salad, can you make sure there's no char marks on my chicken breast? Uh, you want her to levitate the chicken over the grill? I mean, what do you want her to... 
very picky, very meticulous with Walter Charmerks have carcinogens. Carcinogens create cancer. I want the chicken breast, but I don't want the cancer. Another time he ordered a chicken salad. This man was 6'9", 256 pounds. He always ate salads, and I rarely saw him clear his plate. Had the best body of all time in the NBA. He ordered a chicken salad one time. It came with hard-boiled eggs. The salad came out. He says, I don't want hard-boiled eggs. They're high in cholesterol, and we're in Salt Lake City. They all know who we are. We're the only brothers in town. Well, Mr. Malone, the salads are pre-made and the egg is crumbled over the salad. Well, would you mind picking it out for me? He annoyed me. I would go behind his back. I would apologize to the waitress and give her an extra tip. Me? I ate whatever they brought me. French fries? Cool. Gravy? Cool. This the wrong order. I'll keep this and I'll eat the other food you bring out too. He annoyed me when he ordered food because I thought he was difficult. Carl Malone played 20 years in the NBA. I played three. I actually have motivational speakers calling me, saying, Walter, we're in a recession. I'm thinking about quitting and getting a real job. Now, isn't that an oxymoron? A motivational speaker quitting. You know what I do when I get those phone calls? I motivate them to quit. Because <laughs> in my mind, if it's going to be a dog-eat-dog -dog world, I'm going to be the big dog. And I always ask them a question, because they say, you know, Walter, the economy, the recession, the economy, the recession. I don't trust the media. I was a high school basketball star. I began to deal with the media when I was 16, 17, 18 years old. I understand how the media operates. I understand how they make money. So I always challenge these motivational speakers. Well, if we're in a recession, how do you know? Prove it to me. Answer's always the same. Heard it on the news. Let me show you how it plays out. I just had a financial service firm book me for 30 events. If you multiply my fee times 30, that's an NBA contract. They wanted these events dealt and delivered in 90 days. My fellow motivational speaker friends stopped marketing to financial service firms because they were convinced that financial service firms weren't spending money based on the AIG pushback. Is everybody with me? In 90 days, I made NBA money merely because I don't trust the thing the media says. What are you allowing the media to do to your mind, your approach, your outlook? Are you kidding me? I could always hear my daddy's voice. I don't care where I was. I could be on the school bus. I could be in the lunchroom. I could be on the playground. I could be somewhere I shouldn't be. And I could always hear my daddy's voice. My daddy could protect me on the streets of Chicago when he was not even there. You have children. You have grandchildren. Make sure they can always hear your voice. But most importantly in business, whose voice are you listening to? When it comes to franchising, whose voice are you listening to? When it comes to same day sales, whose voice are you listening to? When it comes down to hiring the right Cassie, whose voice are you listening to? When it comes down to being successful in franchising, whose voice are you listening to? My wife and I are former franchisees. That's why I'm a no-brainer to speak at franchise conferences because every franchise system has typically two groups at the conference. You have the one group that buys in and they're in the corner talking about how can we execute, how can we improve same-day sales. Wow, you're doing good, I'm doing good, let's keep working together. What can we do to improve the brand? We're at the conference, let's buy in. There's always another group over in the other corner. Like, yeah, man, corporate. <laughs> Yeah, corporate. <laughs> Corporates are always trying to sell us something. I know. They're just trying to make money. I know. All that stuff they're talking about, you gonna do it? Nope, you, me either. So every system, trust me, has two different groups at the conference. The group that buys in, and the group that's rebels and don't. So here's another rhetorical question for you. What group are you with? Birds of a feather 
flock together. It doesn't say old birds and new birds. It says birds of a feather. Flock. Brian Tracy puts it this way, another very great motivational speaker. He says your salary will be the average of your five closest friends. I never made the Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan money. I was terrified of becoming that athlete who went broke. And for months, I saw my checking account dwindle every single month. College educated, college degree, but every month my checking account was dwindling. I had no other skill sets. I had sold out to the sport, which you have to do. To play pro basketball, you got to sell out. So here I am, 31 years old, wife of three kids, mortgage clicking every single month, and I was scared. And I believe if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. So the next day, we joined the country club. And I walked in with my typical Chicago strut. All the other guys walked like this. <laughs> I looked at my wife and I said, babe, I can't even walk like that. That does not look comfortable. It doesn't even look natural. Brothers don't walk like that. But Brian Tracy is right. When I walked into that country club, I was scared to death about my future. But your salary will become the average of your five closest friends. Now we've been at the country club for 14 years. Now I can walk like they walk. Now I can talk like they talk. Now I think like they think. And now I make what they make. Don't think that I'll be a saint But I might go down to the river Cause the way that the sky opens up